We're the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. After decades of planning and research, I was finally finished and launched in 1990 as NASA had wished. I orbit 340 miles above Earth's surface to do my thing. Powered by solar power collected by my two solar powered wings. I'm the length of a large school bus and weigh as much as two elephants, making more than a million observations. While traveling five miles per second I take sharp pictures of objects in the sky Such as galaxies, planets, and stars And transmit them back to Earth for you to see Earth's telescopes are blocked by the atmosphere To see light from space I orbit above this atmosphere To give a clear view of my star chase My achievements are pinning down the age of the universe And I discovered two moons of Pluto, Nix, and Hydra, of course I've helped determine the rate of which the universe is expanding in hole and discovered nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole. The James Webb Telescope is an infrared space observatory launched in 2021 for space exploration. You see, I'm here to probe the cosmos and uncover the history of the universe from the Big Bang and alien planet formation and much more, of course. I'll take 30 days to travel a million miles to my home that's permanent orbiting the sun aligned with the Earth to explore space is my intent. When NASA built me 10 billion dollars was my cost my impressive primary mirror is 6.5 meters across it has 18 segments in a honeycomb structure i say and i am powered by an onboard solar array the solar array provides me with 2000 watts of electrical power and a propulsion system to maintain my observatory orbit by the hour i have enough propellant on board to last 10 years of operation to give a better understanding of the universe to every nation i can see 13 billion light years back in time which is 100 million years after the universe was born i do refine we're important because we give a view of space that is clear orbiting above earth's foggy atmosphere we're the hubble space telescope and the james webb telescope that's me we're here to tell you about us and what we can see I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. I fly around the world every 90 minutes. I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours. That's legit. I'm 357 feet long from end to end. And am I after the moon? I'm the second brightest object in your sky. I have two bathrooms on board, there's also one gym. I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win. Here's a brief history about how I came to be. Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story. The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s. The structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the U.S. launched December 4th by the space shuttle Endeavour set it on its course. The Endeavour met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection. 
connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the space shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Katanko, and Sergei Krikalev. The US lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008, and we're not done. The ISS consists of 15 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation. The United States and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden. Switzerland and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B I'm a gas giant too far away to see I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter I'll describe With the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 Is when they noticed me at first I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially my birthday I was discovered by an astronomer named Francis T. O'Donovan that is for sure first seen on the transatlantic exoplanet survey or you can call it TRES it's an acronym I say this all happened in California you will see at the famous Palomar Observatory my discovery also took place at the Lowell Observatory located in Arizona. Now, here's more about me. My name is TRES-2B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750 light years away from your solar system. That's where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter. You're super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely bizarre. My name is TRES-2B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. I'm an exoplanet orbiting the star, Caro 7 you see. In the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B. I was first detected photometrically in 2009 by the French led Caro. As the director of research emeritus at the CNRS, it's going on. I used to be 
Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate Caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree When I was ejected into space I am lunar debris I am a near-Earth object, also known as Neo, part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo. I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet. I'm called a quasi-satellite. I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it. Earth has a second moon. It's me, provisionally designated. 2016 HO3 Kamu Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. My discovery site is Kepler Space Observatory on the 20th in the month of February. The Kepler Space Telescope did make my discovery along with two other planets, Kepler 37, C and D. To date, I am the smallest planet discovered around a mid-sequence star outside solar system I am found. I have a radius slightly bigger than your moon, but I'm slightly smaller than Mercury. You've learned this in this tune. I'm classified as an exoplanet, also a sub-Earth. This means that I'm substantially less massive than Venus and Earth. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February. 2013 now let's learn more about me i do have a diameter of 2400 miles i'm likely a rocky planet with a solid surface though i have a surface temperature around 700 k the k does mean calvin in the international system of units today i orbit my g star it's called kepler 37 here it's similar to your sun as you can see when it did appear i orbit my parent star Lyra, please stop by. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February in 2013. Now let's learn more about me. I'm an extrasolar planet called Kepler 37b, orbiting Kepler 37. That's my host star, you see. I was discovered in the month of February. 2013 now let's learn more about me I am the sun the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation this radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in this song and why you should care the sun is a ball of plasma like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel this plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field when the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots they are real this energy released is caused by magnetic knots when one of these knots breaks it releases solar flares so you are taught solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one these solar flares race through space 
at the speed of light creating a solar proton storm these storms are no delight when millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere these storms are called coronal mass ejections as you see right here these cmes reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour when they hit earth it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power the earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm when a cme is too big it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century so you've been warned if a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun i do say if this type of cme traveled across space towards the earth it would reach you in one day yeah that's fast for what that is worth its shock wave would compress earth's magnetic field making it frail the two magnetic fields would merge stretching earth's field in to a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power, humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices. No refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though no, we can't stop these terrible solar storms. Their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the Stone Age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the Aurora Borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in this song and why you should care. Could be sent to the moon and land. Up 
mission was done. The first use of the Apollo rover happened in 71 as well. This launched on Apollo 15 mission and it went real swell. Apollo 16 launched in 1972. Astronauts explored the lunar highlands. This is true. In 72, Apollo 17 was launched and nothing went wrong. This marks the last walk on the moon since then. Earth 
when you look up in the sky I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun And I'm the slowest rotating one Of all the planets in our solar system Now learn and have some fun Carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds is what makes up my atmosphere and for this I am very proud. Volcanoes, mountains, craters, and some big lava plains are what make up my bumpy surface and my clouds make no rain. I was named Venus after the goddess of love. The Romans gave me my name due to my brightness above. I am Venus, I'm the second planet from the sun. And I'm the slowest rotating one Of all the planets in our solar system Now learn and have some fun My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see No planet in our solar system is bigger than me My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be And I have 62 moons that rotate around me so free The Romans gave me my name after their king of the gods Because my size is so massive in the sea of the stars Callisto Europa got a meeting short as they come it takes 12 earth years for me to orbit the sun that makes one year on my surface that's a really long run my name is jupiter the biggest planet you see no planet in our solar system is bigger than me my name is jupiter a windy planet i be and i have 62 moons that rotate around me so free is the amount that I'm wide I'm so big you could fit 1,000 Earths inside I've got a giant red spot It is a raging storm Scientists think 400 years ago Is when it took form Hydrogen and helium Make up most of my atmosphere I am a gas giant And an impressive sphere 3.13 is the amount of degrees That I tell on my axis, let's sing the chorus, please. My name is Jupiter, the biggest planet you see. No planet in our solar system is bigger than me. My name is Jupiter, a windy planet I be. And I have 62 moons that rotate around me so free. Tides that we see change 200 
138,900 miles from the Earth is the distance measured when the first spaceship landed on my turf. The reason you see one half of my surface all the time is because my rotation's the same speed as the Earth taught in this rhyme. It takes 27 Earth days for me to rotate once around. There is no air on my surface, so you won't hear any sound. On the moon, Earth's natural satellite, I rotate the same speed as the Earth, and I'm a natural source of light. On the moon, my appearance is gray and white, you only see one half of my surface, whether it's day or night. I have no moons and I have no rings 
things But I'm the second densest planet amongst other things I am the first planet from our sun you see My name is Mercury, nothing orbits faster than me The smallest planet with the second hottest degree My name is Mercury, no one is smaller than me My upper atmosphere 
atmosphere as methane, that's why I have blue on me. Hydrogen and helium are the rest of my atmosphere. I have 13 moons with one still waiting to confirm it's here. Minus 392 degrees, an average day on me. And my winds are the strongest than any planet in our system. See, my name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun. I've got six rings made of dust and some rocky chunks. About 165 Earth years makes one Neptunian year. 57.7 Earths could fit in my giant sphere 2.8 billion miles is my distance from our sun One day on me is about 16 Earth hours of cold fun No life as we know it could survive on me I'm the fourth largest planet in our system You'd have to agree My name is Neptune, the eighth planet from our burning sun I've got six rings made of dust and some rocks I'm a hypothetical planet, they call me Planet Nine. In the outer solar system, you may notice me in time. I'm a hypothetical planet, they call me Planet Nine. I orbit your sun, when I'm discovered, I'll make headlines. I have yet to be discovered, astronomers search for me. That's the reason I'm a hypothetical planet, you see. Astronomers think I am in the outer solar system. I spin beyond Neptune's orbit. They think on average I orbit the sun 250 times that of the earth But no one knows until me they find Constantine, Batygin, and Michael E. Brown Think I could be the core of a giant planet that used to be around They think my original orbit used to be by Jupiter During the genesis of the solar system then ejected they sure As of May 2020 there's no observation of planet 9 But they have not ruled find me in time. Why field infrared survey, explorer survey space, looking for me in the outer solar system but still haven't found a trace. I'm a hypothetical planet, they call me planet nine. In the outer solar system you may notice me in time. I'm a hypothetical planet, they call me planet nine. I orbit your sun, when I'm discovered I'll make headlines. My semi-major axis is four to eight hundred astronomical units in this lesson I teach you. My earth mass is thought to be between 5 to 10. 15 to 25 degrees is my orbital inclination. After the discovery of Neptune in 1846, there's been speculation of another planet that might exist. Maybe you'll become an astronomer and be the first to discover me. But until then, I'll be hypothetical planet, you see. I'm a hypothetical planet, they call me planet nine in the outer solar system you may notice me in time i'm a hypothetical planet they call me planet nine i orbit your sun when i'm discovered i'll make headlines i'm a hypothetical planet they call me planet nine in the outer solar system you may notice me in time i'm a hypothetical I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen I orbit Jupiter, my name is Ganymede Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star Let me introduce myself, I'm Ganymede I orbit Jupiter, come and learn all about me out of all the known moons in the solar system I am the largest by far until a larger moon comes I was discovered by Galileo Galilei In the year of 1610 in January If I orbited the sun instead of Jupiter I'd be considered
considered a planet by the IAU for sure. I am larger than Pluto and our planet Mercury, and I'm slightly smaller than Mars, as you can see. I do have an iron-rich liquid core. I'm made of equal amounts of silicate rock and water. There is more. I have an eternal ocean that may contain much more water than all Earth's oceans combined, but no one knows for sure. I'm the only moon known to have its own magnetic field. I'm the ninth largest object in the solar system for real. I'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen. I or Orbit Jupiter, my name is Ganymede. Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars. I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star. My diameter is 3,273 miles. I'm 26% larger than Mercury by volume with style. It takes me roughly seven days to orbit Jupiter at 665,000 miles, I assure. I'm around the same age as my planet Jupiter. I'm 4.5 billion years old. I'm very mature. Let's take a look inside and cut away my layers here. Polar frost covers my surface. It did just appear. Under my hexagonal ice, you'll find my saltwater ocean. Then the tetragonal ice and rocky mantle within. This is my iron and iron sulfate liquid core, followed by an iron core that solid you want facts here some more i'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen i orbit jupiter my name is ganymede larger than mercury pluto and slightly smaller than mars i'd be classified as a planet if i orbited our star i'm the largest satellite in the solar system seen i orbit jupiter my name is ganymede Larger than Mercury, Pluto, and slightly smaller than Mars. I'd be classified as a planet if I orbited our star. I am an exoplanet. My name is Kepler, 1649C. I orbit a red dwarf. Kepler, 1649, you now see, exoplanets orbit outside your solar system, that's where I hide, I am similar to Earth, I'm spun, find out more when this song is done, I was discovered in April 2020, the year by the Kepler Space Telescope and so we are clear Jeff Coughlin the director of S-E-T-I said I'm similar to planet Earth found so Far by the space telescope, Kepler at large. I'm about 300 light years from your Earth in the constellation of Cygnus. For what that's worth, I'm identified as a rocky planet by NASA my radius is 1.6 times that of Earth I know that you're in awe I take 19.5 Earth days to orbit my host star Kepler 1649 is its name the red dwarf in charge I am in the habitable zone of my red dwarf star so far this is known due to the lack of information on my atmosphere it is unclear 
If I can't sustain liquid water on my surface around my sphere I am an exoplanet, my name is Kepler, 1649C I orbit a red dwarf, Kepler, 1649 You now see exoplanets orbit outside your solar system That's where I hide I am similar to Earth, I'm spun Find out more when the song is done I am an exoplanet, my name is Kepler 1649C I orbit a red dwarf, Kepler 1649 You now see exoplanets orbit outside your solar system that's where i hide i am similar to earth i'm spun find out more when the song is done i'm an extrasolar planet named 51 pegasi b Discovered in 1995 at Oak Province Observatory I'm an extrasolar planet named 51 Pegasi B I am formally named Dimidium Yeah, that is me I was the first exoplanet orbiting a main sequence star 51 Pegasi is my star's name I know it sounds bizarre I'm the prototype for a class of planets called Hot Jupiters I'm 1850 degrees Fahrenheit Measured by astronomers I was first discovered in the year of 1995 at the Hope Province Observatory with their eye tip towards the sky. The astronomers who discovered me, I will tell you in this song. They are Michelle Mayer and Didier Quillos. They are headstrong. My discovery had won these men a Nobel Prize in Physics. There was nothing to be said about them by their critics. My Jupiter mass is a round point four six. That's my unit of mass equal to the total mass of Jupiter, the planet. I'm located 50 light years from the constellation Pegasus. You need a very large telescope to see me. This you can trust. In 2015, the IAU announced my chosen name without a laugh. They named me Dimidium, which is an adverb meaning by half. Dimidium is my name because my mass is almost half of Jupiter's. Since my discovery, lots of exoplanets have been discovered. I am much closer to my star than Mercury is to your sun. That is why I'm so hot. Yeah. Well, I am spun. My orbital speed is in miles per hour, 304,000. Now that's a lot of great power. I am thought to be tidally locked to my host star. Much like the moon is to your Earth, but not as far. I'm an extrasolar planet named 51. Peg 
SIB Discovered in 1995 at Oak Province Observatory I'm an extrasolar planet named 51 Pegasus IB I am formally named Dimidium Yeah, that is me J1407B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree. Its name is V1400 Centauri. In 2012, when I was discovered by Eric Mamajek at the University of Rochester, I earned the name of Super Saturn because of my massive system of circumplanetary rings for sure. 90 million kilometers is the radius of my rings. That's about 200 times the size of Saturn's rings, which makes me the king. When I orbit my sun, it takes about a decade, which is estimated at about 3,725 days. I'm within the constellation of Centaurus It's about 434 light years from the Earth But I don't fuss No one knows if I'm a gas giant Or a brown dwarf with rings I'm sure you'll find out more about me While I do my thing There's a gap in my rings Which probably means one thing It may have been made by an exomoon of mine About this I do sing I also have a Another name when I show you, you will see it is 1S Wasp J147B. My name is J1407B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 Centauri. My name is J1407. B, that's me. I have a ring system bigger than Saturn, you see. I orbit a young star, and we can all agree its name is V1400 